Hello there. You are just in time for a little blood and devil's food cake. It's cocktail time. And we are gonna have a little blood, two eyeballs. Better to see you with, my dear. Cheers. When I was a child, and I mean a child, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I used to have a devil's night party. It was the night before Halloween. And my friends from the neighborhood, you know, you had your dance studio friends and your school friends and your neighborhood buddies. Yes. My devil's night party consisted of devil's food cake. That's a mighty big knife to cut that cake. Red blood punch, some other hors d'oeuvres, and maybe even a leg to gnaw on. Yes. Oop. Ah, 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 ah. That's my leg. That, that, excuse me, that's my leg. Well, you can nibble, but just a nibble. Hmm, what did we do at this devil's night party? Well, we ate and we drank and we played with the Ouija board. Yes. We asked it questions. You know, would the mean guy on the corner ever move out? Would this friend kiss that friend? And who would get to do a seance? That was my devil's night party. But before the party started, we terrorized the neighborhood. It was devil's night, the night before Halloween. What does that mean? We soaped the windows. Anybody's car that was parked outside in their driveway and not tucked away in the garage for safety, their windows were getting soaped. The side windows. We didn't soap the front windows because they wouldn't be able to see the next day. And yes, the windows on your house. I think most of the people on the street had the same window cleaner that came once a month. So it was kind of sort of all right. And we didn't get up high to the windows in the master bedroom or anything. It was just all the windows that we could reach. What else did we do? Uh, hello, toilet paper in the bushes, toilet paper in the trees, toilet paper around your mailbox, toilet paper around your columns if you had columns in front of your house. And uh, then when you got near the end of the roll, you just threw it. I still got it. Yes. But some of the boys, you know, they had a good arm and they could throw it way up high in the trees. When those neighbors woke up the next morning to go to work, they were not having it. Although they knew we were good kids and they knew it was devil's night. So they knew it was gonna happen. Were they prepared? No, I think they forgot about it every single year. But we didn't. Devil's Night was one of my best memories as a kid growing up. So was Halloween, but we'll get to that in a minute. Some people would jump out of the bushes and scare you if you were cutting through their yard. And this one kid, he would sit in his driveway, dressed in black completely, with the hose in his hand. The hose with the water turned up, but the squirt thing, you know, the little gun thing. And if you tried to cut through their yard or do anything to their house, he would spray you with water. And his dad was the chief of police. You would think that they could come up with something better than a hose, but anyway. They had the yard that their backyard connected to the other people's backyard, and that's where you cut through on the street. So he really jammed us up and we got in a lot of exercise. Now I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at this time, right? It's freezing cold. By October 30th, it was probably 40, 50 degrees outside. So you had a turtleneck and you had a, a sweatshirt over it and you had your jeans and your socks and another pair of socks and your tennis shoes, you know, in case you got sprayed with the water. And we were at it. We probably started around eight or nine at night and we did it for two hours at least running around terrorizing the neighborhood. Now, once you had their entire 
landscape development. Toilet papered. The trees, the bushes, uh, the front door, everything. I don't mean an evergreen tree, although you can do those too, but a big tree with branches, like a maple or an oak tree, right? And you stand underneath it and you throw it straight up though. So you have to have a good arm. These are going out, boom. If it rains, look out because that toilet paper is gonna turn sopping wet and it's gonna be a mess. I think the neighbors all prayed that it would be a clear night in Penn Hills on Devil's Night. Once we were happy with our artwork in the neighborhood, we wanted to let the neighbors know they should come out and take a look. What is this? Do you all know what this is? It's a pea shooter. So it's thicker, wider diameter than a straw. You can use dried peas, but nobody's mom has dried peas anymore. But I bet you have some popcorn. Yes. All right, now you take the popcorn, slide it into the top of the pea shooter, just a couple, right? The wider your pea shooter is, still a pea shooter, even if you use popcorn, you can't call it a corn shooter, it just doesn't make sense. All right, so, ready? When that hits your window, it's gonna wake you up. And the popcorn's a little harder than the peas, so it works a little bit better. You shoot it up in the air at the windows, and it wakes people up. Now, we were little kids, so I'm guessing this was a Friday night after the high school football game, after the older kids in the neighborhood got home. Now, we're out there. It was probably later, 10, 11, and we are terrorizing the neighborhood. And right now, I'm terrorizing my cameraman. All right, so pea shooter, corn not popped, or dried peas, they come in a big bag, and you can wake everybody up in the neighborhood. But you have to hit the windows. So start practicing now, you have a month. Just like whatever acrobatic trick we're working on in my Zoom classes on Saturday afternoon. But join me because we have lots of Halloween tricks coming up in acrobatic class. Now the other thing we did was have a haunted house. It was like a progressive dinner party. You know how you go to somebody's house for hors d'oeuvres and then the next house for salads and the next house for the main course? Well, we took turns. So every year, somebody else had the haunted house in their garage. All my friends in the neighborhood, the boys, they were amazing at this. So you take drapes, you take blankets, sheets, and you staple gun them in to your garage. Kids, I don't know if you should let your parents watch this video, but I'm just saying, it was very creative. We were very artsy. Uh, I personally was very artsy. I was probably designing everybody's costume, who was gonna be this character and who was gonna be that character, and what mask this person would wear and what prop this person would use. So we had this haunted house. And back in the day, I mean, you could touch people. It was in your haunted house. So some people sat on the floor, just sat there and grabbed people's feet and legs as they were going through. So you staple gun all these sheets, blankets, whatever, into the ceiling, right? And then you walk through it, the maze. So you've created walls, you've created, uh, you know, stations, places for people to go. So now you have to rig up all the lighting. You have spotlights, you have strobe lights, you have black lights. You do it all, you buy it all, you have them hanging from the ceilings, from the corners. You have it plugged in. We had extension cords, extension cords. Every single kid brought their parents extension cords from their house. They unplugged whatever they had to and they just brought them. And we had the best time having those haunted houses. And we would do it the weekend before Halloween and then all during the week of Halloween. And everybody in the neighborhood came and other people in the next neighborhoods out, you know, they came to check out our decor, our level of frightening matter. Yes, 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 yes. And just how good we were. It was a thing back then. And uh, I love that thing. I am scared to death of haunted houses. Scared. I remember going with my student, Mark Myers, and we would be in Ocean City here, or Ocean, whatever, and there'd be a haunted house, and we're like, oh yeah, we'll go. Let's go tonight, let's go out, we're going. The competition's over, let's go to a haunted house. Then we get there, he's like latched onto me, squeezing me so hard, I'm like inching forward like tiny little borets, flat-footed, 
scared to death. Why did we think that was a good idea? Why didn't we just go to the movies? We were trying to be cool, but we weren't. So the haunted houses in my neighborhood, I loved because I saw how it went up, how it was constructed, what was gonna happen. I knew, I was like the director kind of, yes. But real haunted houses, stay. Stay far away from them, stay far away. Even that whole thing at Bush Gardens and some of the theme parks, this is years ago. Some of my Disney dancers started out in a Halloween show at Bush Gardens, right? Of course, I fly down to see them and we go into the park, we walk in, and these masked freaks are rollerblading through this park with hockey sticks and the hockey sticks are making sparks on the ground. Now, I don't know if it was some kind of special hockey stick or they had flint on the bottom of it or lighter fluid, I don't know and I don't care to know. They were so scary. They would zoom right by you and like touch you and hit you and then, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I, rem I just remembered this. You go to throw something away in the trash can and you walk over and you're not paying attention and you just lean in and somebody grabs your arm. Grabs your arm into the trash can. It was so scary. I think that's the last Halloween theme park thing I ever went to. It freaked me out. Just because they come up behind you and they're so quick and then you're walking and you don't know, are these kids, teenagers, that are just dressed up coming to the park? Or do they work for the park? Were they hired? Who knows? It could be both. And if it's just some kid pretending, I don't want anything to do with them. And if they were hired by the theme park, then they hired some pretty scary people. It's the month of October. I have lots of tricks to teach you, but you must have straight legs and pointed feet because this might happen if you bend your knees and flex your feet in my class. You never know what I'm capable of doing. Wait, what am I doing with this bad leg and this sickled foot when I have a whole bloody cake to eat?